I think there is only one senator that has been in the Senate longer than I have, and we know who uh, that antique is. And there are two members uh, that came in with the class of 92, of which I was the least distinguished member um, on that. I don't think that I have, during my legislative career, ever seen such a period of turbul turbulence and urgency to pass certain legislation. And the term that came back to my mind, which I did not learn in an English class, but learned in a military science class was called precipitous intervention. And what that means in that world is that things are done without careful investigation or comprehensive consideration. And I'd like to give you just a couple of examples of it, one of which we addressed earlier uh, that the senator from Portsmouth offered, and that was Senate Bill 5029, driving without lights. Consider this, and I remember speaking against this bill when it came through, that we were going to stop state troopers from having the ability to stop someone on Saturday morning at 2 a.m. driving down Interstate 95 with their headlights off. They were not going to be able to stop this person, and it made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But there were those who wanted that bill passed as part of an overall package, but they really did not consider the ultimate consequences that would result in that bill. Another situation coming a little bit closer to home that may make some of you uncomfortable. I remember a number of years ago when we were having a rather contentious discussion that had a taint of racial involvement in it when one of the members in front of others called me a white redneck MF. And I really wasn't offended by it because I realize that people say things when they are under pressure or they are an emotional. But a lot of times, Mr. President, when we say or do things, we don't know page two, or we don't know what's going on through that individual's mind. And here's what offended me. Not the vulgarity, uh, not the fact that I was called a redneck. I do wear J.C. Penney suits, so that makes me a redneck, maybe. It was the fact that it was said about my mother as she was dying. And that's what I took offense at. But that other person did not know it. So, as Rudyard Kipling was saying, that I needed to reflect about what others might have th thought or not known. Mr. President, a situation much, much closer to us. I can recall in 2019, Mr. President, when you were accused of some vile crimes by two individuals and that there was a feeding frenzy from the media on that that resulted in some unfortunate consequences to you uh, that you were asked to resign from a board at Duke. Your law firm wanted to place you on a leave of absence. And it was done without any investigation, any collaboration, or any hearing whatsoever. And it just didn't seem right to me. And as a matter of fact, some of you may recall at the end of the 2019 session, I, on the floor of the Senate, thanked you for your professionalism and your objectivity and constraining the emotions that I know you and your family were going through. And I meant it sincerely. Mr. President, you re responded with a soliloquy from the dais and expressed not just your concern, but out your outrage at how the media was grabbing on to an unsubstantiated and an uncooperated <clears throat> accusation against you that was inflicting harm on you and your family. And one of the things you suggested was that this was a media lynching. Mr. President, another situation. There is a small school out 
in Ohio, which back in 2016 had a situation that should cause us to pause. And very near the campus of that liberal arts college was a grocery store that had been there for generations. The proprietor of the grocery store noticed a black student that came in that made a modest purchase but was trying to shoplift two bottles that were underneath the individual's coat. The proprietor tried to use his camera to take a picture of the individual and the young man snatched the camera away and ran outside. The proprietor went after him to try to restrain him and can you imagine what happened? The young man who tried to commit the theft along with two other students ended up beating the stuffings out of this man in a park right across from the store and the students went back and said this was as a result of racism and racial accusations directed at these three black students. The very next day, the very next day, hundreds, hundreds of students from that school stood out and picketed and boycotted that store because of the racial accusations that were made. It was very interesting the dean of students and other members of the administration participated in it, and it was published in the student newspaper that was widely disseminated, and the college terminated all business relationships that it had with that store based upon the accusations of those students. Fast forward. The student who was accused of trying to shoplift and steal things ultimately pled guilty to a criminal offense. The student who tried to steal the goods ended up writing, writing out that the proprietors and owners of that grocery store had done nothing racially, had made no accusations, and they were absolved of it whatsoever. What were the consequences? The owners of the grocery store filed a civil lawsuit against the college, against the college, and got a judgment for $44 million against the college because the accusations were unsubstantiated. But as a result of what initially happened, there were an emotional furor that created all that. And I suggest to you once again that sometimes independent cooperation is a very important thing. What's that got to do with VMI? I'll tell you what it's got to do with it, Mr. President, is I read with great objectivity the letter that came from the governor on the governor's stationery that was signed by 10 individuals. And it started out in the first paragraph and used some very powerful language. Appalling culture. Talked about a systemic situation. And I suggest to you, Mr. President, based upon those four examples that I just shared with you, that we ought to have some reflection because I think there was a precipitous perception that came about. And what really struck me were a couple of things. On the letter, which was signed by 10 individuals, I could not help but think about the inconsistencies with what had gone on with some of those individuals as opposed to what they were stating in this letter. And let me say, there are some legitimate concerns that need to be addressed in that letter. But first of all, it was signed on the governor's stationery, Ralph S. Northam. You know, in the twilight of my career, my memory has gotten very faint 
and is not as acute as it used to be. But I remember when the governor was accused of blackface, day one, he admitted it was him, admitted it was him and asked for forgiveness. Day two, he comes back and says, no, it was not me. It was not me, and we need to do an independent investigation on it. But I did do it in Texas, so that makes it okay, because I didn't do it in Virginia. I did it in Texas. It's okay. I suggest to you that an independent investigation was done, and it came back inconsequential. A second signature on it was, Mr. President, was yourself. And I just shared with you the agony that I know you and your family went through when you were unjustifiably accused. And then who else signs it? The Attorney General of Virginia. Another individual who admitted he had done blackface, but he was more skilled than the governor in managing to suppress it so it could not get into the public arena. It's interesting that there are a number of names on this letter who immediately called for the resignation of the governor of Virginia without any investigation, without any more explanation, and the governor did not do that. And I suggest to you it was another example of a precipitous perception that was created the interesting thing about the Attorney General, other than the fact that he acknowledged what he did, and I doubt if there are many of you in here that know this, <clears throat> that some of the accusations and some of the factual recitations of things that have happened at VMI were reviewed, were reviewed and the attorney general's on site, a deputy AG was involved in them and signed off on them. And in a number of instances, that deputy AG told VMI, you have got to downgrade, you have got to reduce the punishments that you are trying to impose for these highly inflammatory and inappropriate racial remarks and comments. You cannot punish them that hard. And I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up on how many of you knew that, because I know not one of you know that. I suggest to you, Mr. President, that sometimes, even in turbulence and chaos, that a little bit of opportunity to allow an investigation to take place and for the facts to be put on the table, I think it would have made you feel better it would have made the governor feel better. It, and I just suggest to you, the letter went to the Board of Visitors of VMI. And, and I will tell you, I am involved in some of the crisis management on this. Immediately, immediately, the Board of Visitors accepted with great reluctance on a unanimous vote the resignation of General P, who is a true military hero in, the, in Virginia. I bet not many of you have taken a look at the Constitution of Virginia, but I'm trying to put something in perspective. Article 5, Section 7, the governor of Virginia is the commander-in-chief of all of Virginia's armed forces. When a letter comes from the governor saying, I have lost confidence in you, the general must resign because the governor is his commander in chief and he did so. The Board of Visitors accepted it. The Board of Visitors immediately said, we are taking down the Stonewall Jackson statute on it and we are embarking on a greater investigation on what we need to change from a cultural standpoint. The relevancy of all this, and I, I wrap it up, Mr. President, is this. When I hear terms bannered around about 
defunding. I hear terms kicked around about relevancy. Here are a couple of really brief points. Michael LaCale, Michael LaCale, he was a Rhodes Scholar from VMI who came from Kenya where his father was a corn farmer of the poorest and destitute family. He came to VMI and became a Rhodes Scholar. He wanted to go to med school to go back to Kenya to deliver medical services. He had no money. The members of one particular class got a group of VMI graduates who had all graduated before VMI was integrated, and they put up $10,000 each every year to get him through med school. And he went back to Kenya. So I say to you, Michael LaCale, say his name. But fast forward it a little quicker. Anika Tice, and I don't know if anyone in here has ever heard Ms. Tice's name. She graduated in May of 2020. She is commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army. But before she goes on active duty, Mr. President, she has gone to Africa because she was a Fulbright scholar, a Fulbright scholar, and she wanted to go back to pay some of her, what she felt was her dues on it. The interesting thing, as you might discern from this, she was a young black lady who came from some very challenging backgrounds. And I say to you, say her name. But the interesting thing, and you, you will probably see some something in writing from me a little later on about relevancy. Let me tell you about relevancy in 2020. Ms. Tice, Fulbright Scholar, do you know what school had more Fulbright Scholars than any public or private college in Virginia? More than UVA, more than William & Mary, more than Hampton University, more than University of Richmond, VMI. But do you know this? VMI had more Fulbright scholars in 2020 than any public or private university or college in America. In America. That's relevancy. So I suggest everyone, including myself, needs to take a deep breath. We need to stop hyperventilating. We need to allow this investigation to go forward and for the results to come out and to be made public. And I do hope they will not be sequestered under that language that says it's exempt from FOIA, because I think everyone needs to know what the findings are of that independent evaluation are. And I suggest, Mr. President, taking some comments that you made in 2019 We cannot let the media lynch VMI. Thank you, Mr. President. What purpose is the senior citizen?